If you're thinking about applying to medical school next September and are serious about getting a place at one of the competitive medical schools, here are the four stages that I've outlined where I'll touch on some of the things that you should be doing at each to make sure you build a strong and successful application. This is gonna be a shortened version of the long talk that I give on the four key steps to a successful medical school application. And what I'm gonna be doing is using a timeline that I refer to in that and I give away for free. So if you want to kind of help with this video and make sure that it's most useful for you, I recommend that you check out the link here, download the PDF of that free timetable that you can get, and then you can join along with this as we go along to kind of give you an idea of the four stages. That talk in itself is super, super useful, so I recommend that you watch it anyway. But if you just want the timetable, it'll be emailed to you once you sign up to the talk. So just download it, open it up, and let's go. So what we're gonna do now is break it down into all of those four phases, taking one at a time, and then at the end, I'm going to tell you the two most important things at the end of the video that you can do to to make sure you stand out when you apply. So if you've got the timeline with you now, you will see that the very first stage is that of experience and prep. So these are the things that you can do now to start building a strong application. These will be anything from a year before you actually submit your application or even further back if you've been preparing for a very long time. At this stage, of course, it's a long way away. And as you get closer to the application date, once you get more information, it's gonna be a lot clearer which medical schools that you're going to apply to. But when you're kind of starting the journey, the most important thing to do at the start is have a rough idea of which medical schools that you need to go to just so that you know which exams you need to sit. This is particularly important for the grads because you may need to sit one or all three of the GAMSAT, UCAT and or BMAT. If you're an undergrad, you simply need to know whether you need to allow time to prepare for the UCAT or BMAT or both. Also at this stage, it's really important to have an idea of what sort of specs you have and what's needed for you to get into medical school. For example, international students particularly or people who may have weak GCSEs or A-level may need to resit a GCSE, maybe if they've got less than a six in maths, or do some English if they haven't got the requirements that are needed for medical school. And if you have to sit that in the year that you're preparing, it's really important to know that ahead of time so that you can plan it and sit it at the most convenient time for you. Because what you'll find happens over the course of the year as you're applying is that a lot of people have things happen that whittle down the options that are available to them. So for example, they might not make the threshold UCAT score for a few universities, they might decide not to sit the BMAT, at, or they might, if they're a grad applicant, score badly in the GAMSAT. And slowly but surely, those 44 or so medical schools get whittled down to less and less that are available based on your circumstances. So really what we want to do, especially if we're in our final years of school or doing a university degree, is make sure that we score as highly as we possibly can in our academic grades to make sure that we keep as many options open as possible. This is why it's really important to do this sort of research ahead of time, because that means that you go into that year or more of preparation before you submit your application with your eyes fully wide open and that helps you understand exactly what you need to be doing or kind of preparing for in that year of preparation. So in phase one that's more of the research that you need to be doing but now we're going to talk about some of the action items that are going to make you stand out with this first initial phase of your preparation for med school. The first and most important is work experience. With the students on my elite coaching program I tell them that work experience will form the backbone of your application. When you come to talk about things or you sit down at interview and get asked to about things. It's the difference between being the real deal and being someone who's blagging it. When you have got loads of experience and you know what you're talking about, it just comes through in the way that you talk about things and the words that you use. So having a vast wealth of experience in the hospital setting and all the requirements that are needed to get into medicine are what's going to make the difference in setting you apart from all the rest of the crowd. If you get backed into a corner, you're going to be able to pluck out some examples much more easily than somebody who's got limited experience. And that is just gonna help you get out of tricky situations at interview. When I got interviewed several times, I got asked questions that there was no way that I could have prepared for. But by having lots of experience and kind of done the work ahead of time, I had loads of stuff that the questions just triggered my memory to talk about certain things that I hadn't even thought about or hadn't prepared for, but they just came very naturally. And that is what got me my place at medical school. So there are three key elements to work experience and kind of a secret fourth, which I actually talk about in this video and go into a lot more depth in. So I won't talk about them here. But what I will say is that the most important thing when it comes to work experience is that you keep a diary. I'm gonna talk a little bit later about why that is so important. The other action part of this phase one of the preparation is your extracurriculars. When people are selecting students to become medical students, they want to see that they are not just academics, but people who have real lives and kind of real experiences and are well-rounded people. So in my elite coaching program, we actually have a formula to work out the best extracurricular activities for 
you to do to stand out with your medical school application that's personal to you. But when you're thinking about what activities to engage in, you want to think of what are the fundamental things they want to see. So they want to see certain traits that make a good doctor. So things like teamwork, leadership. They want to see well-roundedness. You need to be able to talk to a variety of people from all different backgrounds. So engage in activities that make you socialize with lots of different people will get you to do that. They want to see that you can manage your time and have some stress releases because burnout is a real thing amongst doctors and they want to make sure that you're doing what you can to avoid that. Maybe things like prizes that demonstrate that you've been an outstanding student from a young age. There are lots and lots of things, so check out the Elite Coaching Program where you can find out a little bit more about how to do that. But essentially what I say is, Consider the consultant test. And the consultant test is put yourself in the shoes of a 50 year old consultant doctor who's in a hospital and looking through a hundred of these applications. They're reading loads and loads and probably skim reading them, not looking at them properly. And actually all you want to do in your extracurricular section is just have something that stands out and makes them think, hmm, that's interesting and it makes them want to invite you to interview just to ask you a few further questions about it. For this phase, one of the most important things I say is to keep an information bank. Now this is a reservoir of information where you kind of keep a record of all the things that you've done. So it could be anything from your work experience, keeping a diary, which is probably the most important thing from your shadowing, you keep all those notes there, but even somewhere just to capture anything from maybe if you come up with good sentences or just little things that you're gonna add, because that's gonna help you when it comes to your personal statement and even before interview to help remind you of all the stuff that you've achieved and serve as a bit of a confidence booster. I actually talk about the information bank a little bit more in this video, which I'd recommend that you check out what you should do and why you should do it. So that's everything that you should be doing in phase one. And I would say that would extend from anything from around September, if that's when you're starting your preparation, all the way up to January and February. And then by then you want to have as much of that completed so that you can move on to phase two. So phase two is all about exam preparation. As I said, you should have an idea of what sort of aptitude test you're sitting. That could be anything from one or three of the exams, depending on what you're doing. But this is the stage where you start to feel the knock-on effect from if you're well or badly prepared from the phase before. Because what happens if you're well organized and you start early and like I say, you really compartmentalize everything. What you can do is focus on one thing like the preparation, getting all the work experience and shadowing that you need. And then you can almost forget about it. You've got your diary, you can remind yourself near the time. And then you can almost leave that thing as completed and move on to the next phase, which is focusing solely on your exams to get into medicine. Because students who don't do that end up being in the stage where they all they want to do is focus on their UCAT, which is what you should be doing to make sure that you score the highest. But you still have all these unchecked boxes from the previous phase that you need to be doing when your focus should solely be on that. That's why on our Future Doc Elite Coaching Program, we help students guide them throughout the whole thing so that we make sure that they've got each thing sorted at the right phase, and then we can help guide them and kind of spend all of our time teaching them how to smash the UCAT so they don't have to worry about anything else. So let's go through this timetable now and think about roughly how I would go about planning the year. For example, if you're a grad and you're sitting the GAMSAT, you have four attempts to get the score that you need. The score is valid for two years from the point of entry. So that means that if you're starting in September, you can do the September sitting two years before you enter, the one in March the following year, May the following year, and September around the time that you submit your application, which gives you four attempts to get the score that you need. The great thing is that you can resit it and it's only your last score that's taken. So you can do terribly in the first three attempts, but as long as you score and get the grade that you need in the final one, that is enough to meet the mark to get you into grad entry. The problem can occur if you get a borderline score and you're not sure whether to retake, because if you do and get a lower score, then you have to take the latest one. Anyway, the main point of this is that if you can get your GAMSA out of the way, just like phase one, you can then forget about it and move on to the next thing. Now for everybody and pretty much every applicant who's applying to medicine, the chances are that you are going to be sitting the UCAT. Now most years the UCAT is from the end of July until the end of September. So you have basically a two month window within which to sit it. I would always argue that it's best to start your preparation early, so kind of mid-May is best. That means that you have a good couple of months to prepare and sit the UCAT early in the application window. Because again, for compartmentalization, you can get that out of the way, you know the score that you've got, and then that gives you a bit of time to make sure that you can A, think about whether you want to sit any other exams, or maybe if you kind of need to rethink what universities you're going to apply to based on the UCAT, you've got a little bit of time to make that decision. So when you're deciding when you should sit your UCAT, I would consider the following three 
three things. You want A, enough time to prepare, B, enough time so that you're minimally encroaching on the other important things, which is maybe your A-levels or maybe your final year of your degree. And it's really important because that is the priority really, because if you don't get those scores, then you won't be allowed in. And then thirdly, you want to just make sure that you allow enough time when you sit the UCAT early enough so that you can make space for a plan B. And the other thing to consider is when you are going to sit your BMAT. But typically you have four BMAT sittings. They are usually around February, May, September, and then finally there's one in November or end of October sort of time. There are only eight unis that take the BMAT and some of them will consider any of the sittings, whereas others will only consider those taken in September and November. So be aware of which ones you roughly want to apply to and what their rules are before deciding which one you're going to sit. Because like I say, having these planned out ahead of time and knowing how you're gonna dedicate your time, compartmentalizing it is the best way to increase your focus and chances of scoring highly enough to get into a competitive medical school. So I'm gonna show you a playlist here for the UCAT because that's gonna tell you exactly how much time you need to spend dedicating to the whole of your UCAT preparation and then it's gonna break it down per section and give you the best tips for each. I've also done a similar thing for the BMAT which you can check out here which is gonna give you exactly the same plan just for that test. So once you've done all of that, you'll finally be on two phase three which is what I call crunch time. If you've done those first two phases, is really well it's going to make this stage a whole lot easier but you still do have a lot of things going on at the same time so this phase usually goes from mid-may to mid-october of the year that you're submitting your application so this stage you're going to have a lot going on you're probably going to be having things like your academic tests your aptitude tests maybe you're writing your personal statement choosing your universities, which is super, super important. Then you might be actually doing the shadowing placement that you spent the year organizing. And finally, you might be doing some summer schools for medicine, which is really useful for your application. So that's the stage that you'll probably find the most hectic and the most stressful. And typically the one that our elite students find that they're so glad that they've prepared well in the phases one and two prior. So all of phase three culminates in you submitting your application to UCAS. And then at that stage, we finally move on to phase four. So this stage is all about getting the practice and the knowledge that you need to score highly at interview. And actually, the best thing I can do is refer you to this video where I talk about how to prepare for interviews best. So the question that my elite students ask me the most once they're going through all of this is how to stand out. And I always say that it boils down to two words. They are good exposure and good reflection. So exposure and reflection. The reason I say that is because Everything that you do is going to help you stand out. So exposing yourself to extracurricular activities, getting hospital experience, all of that sort of stuff. But not only just doing it, is thinking back on it, going through it, maybe learning around the stuff that you've seen and reflecting on it is what's gonna help give you the knowledge and kind of the demonstration of the maturity and skills required to make a good doctor that are gonna shine through when you apply. Because the students that are really stand out are those who've exposed themselves in hospital, they've exposed themselves by doing volunteering stuff, they've exposed themselves to a variety of impressive and really outstanding extracurricular activities and achievements. And that is all the stuff that shines through and kind of paints the picture of a really excellent candidate when they come to write their personal statement and they come to interview. Of course, making yourself stand out with the UCAT and the BMAT and if you want to check out any of the courses we provide, that is going to help you do that to score highly. Those are one of the academic ways that you can do it and obviously scoring highly with your grades are going to help as well. But those are the two things from an experiential point of view that are going to give the biggest bang for your buck. And with our elite students, we work with them one-on-one -on -one to help them work out the best way that they can do this so that they can make themselves separate from the crowd when they're applying. So if you want to find out about how you can get some one-on-one -on -one lessons with helping you and coaching you on your journey to medical school, I recommend that you check out this video here where we'll talk you through some of the ways that you can get individual advice.